Now I want to look at <coughs> misplaced modifiers. What you want to do when you're writing <coughs> is you want to be very clear about what you're trying to say. Um, sometimes you may know inside your head exactly what you mean, but sometimes what actually gets onto the paper is a little bit mixed up. And uh, one of the ways things can get mixed up is through misplaced modifiers, which uh, sometimes just leave the reader totally in the dark what you mean, <coughs> and sometimes uh, you can even end up being accidentally extremely humorous. So one of the things is misplaced modifiers is actually one of my favorite grammar topics because it is possible to be very unintentionally humorous. So what we want to do then is how do we identify a misplaced modifier? Well, first we want some definitions. In order to know what a misplaced modifier is, we first need to know what is a modifier. <coughs> and basically a modifier is a word or phrase that describes something. That is to say, it modifies So basically, a modifier is going to be something that it's going to be an adjective, or it's going to be an adverb, um, or it's going to be something that acts as an adjective or an adverb, which it could be a prepositional phrase or a dependent clause. But it's a piece of the sentence that acts as an adjective, meaning it modifies a noun, or it acts as an adverb, meaning that it modifies a verb, or an adjective, or another adverb. And I'm very fond of saying, by the way, that adverbs are very, very sneaky. Part of why they are sneaky is because they can modify almost er anything. So when you're using adverbs, this is where getting them in the right place is particularly important. So um, now we want to say, OK, what's a misplaced modifier? A misplaced modifier. It's going to be something where either it's unclear what it modifies, or, and this is where the unintentional humor typically comes in, it's modifying something other than what the writer intended. So misplaced modifiers can be very humorous when we do end up with a modifier that's not modifying what the writer intended for it to modify. And you'll see a lot of humorous situations. Uh, one classic mid-placed, misplaced modifier um, is, I saw a man digging a well. with a Roman nose. When we look at this sentence, we have here, this is a prepositional phrase, with a Roman nose. That's our modifier. And when we first look at this sentence, it seems to say that the well has a Roman nose, because that's what's closest to that modifier. And then you look at the sentence for a little longer, and you say, no, 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 wait a minute. No, this, the well doesn't have a Roman nose, but rather the man was digging with a Roman nose. He's got this gigantic schnozola, and he's using it to dig a well. And then you think a little bit longer, and then you say, wait a minute. No, actually, the man is who has the Roman nose. Now we've made a little bit more sense. But the way this sentence is written now, it doesn't make sense. So I might say, I saw a man with a Roman nose digging a well. 
Uh, that works a little better, but it's still kind of ambiguous because it may be that still the nose is what's digging the well. So one of the ways to fix this sentence would be getting rid of that modifier and instead putting our adjective here. I saw a Roman-nosed man digging a well. So now we're clear that the nose is on this guy's face and he's not using it to dig the well, it's just there. Now, another classic example, this comes from an old Marx Brothers movie. It, I think it may have been Night in Casablanca, although I don't remember for sure. And so Groucho's talking about um, uh, being out in the African bush and he says, last night I shot an elephant in my pajamas. Groucho's next line was, how he got into my pajamas, I'll never know. So what we have here now is the elephant is wearing Groucho's pajamas. Once again, this is a prepositional phrase, um, and right now it's modifying elephant. This one actually we can fix by simply moving this modifier up into the beginning of the sentence, and then we have, last night in my pajamas, I shot an elephant. Now Groucho's wearing his own pajamas, the elephant's not wearing it. And in fact, if you look around, you'll see examples of misplaced modifiers, and if you know what to look for, uh, you can see they're very humorous at times. Uh, one example, uh, long, long time ago, I was sitting in a waiting room somewhere, and there was a People magazine. Uh, that it was probably a couple of months out of date even then. But it had, I, I think it was talking about the Academy Awards or some such, and talking about a movie star um, on the red carpet. And the thing I remember about it, I don't remember which movie star it was. It may have been to me more, I'm not sure. Uh, but the basic gist of the sentence was, the movie star was accompanied by her husband wearing a black velvet evening gown. And so um, if this really was Demi Moore, uh, we have to hope that Bruce Willis looks good in drag because right now he's the one wearing the black velvet evening gown. Uh, so in this case, once again, we can move this to the beginning of the sentence and make it clear. Wearing a black velvet evening gown, comma, the movie star was accompanied by her husband. So that clarifies that particular um, sentence. Now, there's a very special category of modifiers that is especially important to get in the right place. Uh, there's a category of adverb. Okay, there you go. Flag word, adverb. Adverb means slippery. This is a particular category of adverb known as a restrictive adverb. These are words such as only, or just, or not, or that type of adverb. And when you have these adverbs, these are, as I mentioned, slippery. They can change the meaning of the sentence. Depending on where they are. And so when you're using one of these particular adverbs, you're going to want to be very picky about exactly where you put it. Um, an example of this is, uh, an, it's an old saying, and it used to be uh, much clearer, but modern times this particular old saying has gotten warped. It has gotten mixed up from what it originally said. And the way you hear it most often nowadays is all that glitters is not gold. So what we have here is we have this restrictive adverb not. 
and not is probably the trickiest of the restrictive adverbs. What we have here is this word not is right now modifying the word gold. So what that means now is if you have something that glitters, that something cannot possibly be gold because all that glitters is not gold. If we want to draw a Venn diagram, uh, we can have, we have the set of what glitters, and we have the set of what's gold, and there's no overlap. So if we have all that glitters is not gold, if it glitters, it can't be gold. There's no overlap. Now, the way the saying was originally said is not all that glitters is gold. Now we have this adverb not and it's now modifying all. And so now what we're saying is if we have something that glitters, it might be gold. But it might not be gold because not all that glitters is gold. And so if we look at our Venn diagram for that, we have stuff that glitters, we have stuff that's gold, and there is some overlap. So if we have something that glitters, maybe it is gold, maybe it's not. We don't know for sure. So remember that, especially when you're using these restrictive adverbs, be very careful where you put them so that they are exactly where you want them to be.